Will you all please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Antoinette, can I get a roll call? Mr. Burns? Here. Mr. Cook? Here. Mr. D'Andriano? Here. Mr. Rossi? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Would somebody like to audit the bills? I will make a motion to town board approve abstract number 23, dated December 16th, 2016, in the amount of $126,331.45. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mr. D'Andriano, you're up with that. All right, first item on my agenda is surveillance cameras for the highway and sanitation. Uh, we had a memo from the uh, su highway supervisor and sanitation supervisor, uh, Russ Goff, to upgrade current video and surveillance systems at the highway and in installation at sanitation. Um, without going into too much regarding concern security concerns, we can't divulge too much, but uh, uh, we had met with Russ and Margo at one time, and they expressed their concerns about the antiquated analog video systems, and we needed uh, to upgrade the systems and then in, in add additional cameras and, um, to the to <coughs> sanitation and highway department. So we have a resolution here from to award a strategen. So we they had uh, five different bids. One bid actually just came back just for the one sanitation, but they we have a, a resolution here to award Stratagem contract to upgrade the video and surveillance systems at the Highway Town Garage property and installation of new video surveillance systems at the Town Sanitation and Recycling Center. So I'd like to make a motion to approve the resolution as written, so move. Second. Discussion. Yes, we would. If we could add just one more whereas paragraph uh, identifying uh, the amounts that um, we are awarding the uh, bid on, which is $14,527,000 for the highway department and $4,472.54 for the sanitation department. Why didn't Nikon sub why didn't Nikon submit a bid for new for highway? I'm just it just since they service the rest of the town, that just seems odd to me. Do we know? Russ? Uh. Russ Gov, Patterson Highway Superintendent. We had asked them uh, the first time to install them and they were way higher than anybody when we ins installed the cameras originally six years ago. So we didn't, these are state bids here. Okay. Okay. You actually brought these people in and talked to them about what your needs were. Every one of them. That's yep. right. So mm -hmm. it's not just that they're state bids. Yeah. I think Stratagem was the only state bid, was it not? Uh, Off of the uh, OGS? Well, the one we're going with is state bid, yeah. Right, OGS, right. Yeah. It, it didn't take that it was the actual OGS bid amount. It just said that it had a state contract. I didn't know if it was the Yeah, contract. because I am not sure that they are taking the quote off of the state contract. Yeah, that's why I didn't put it in there. I don't know either. So I don't think we need to, even though one was slightly higher. Russ had a, uh, is that the memo? Yeah. I have a copy. Russ but also referenced the warranties were better. And mm -hmm. So yes. so I think we have a kind of a best value situation instead of the lowest bid. I agree. I agree. You want a second on your whereas that you added in? Would you like to amend your motion? I'd like to make a motion to to add the the prices from Stratagem for the highway sanitation. So I'll second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Well, Next item on my agenda is a letter of recognition. It's always nice to be able to read these. Uh, this letter is from Chief, our incoming Chief Vincent Finelli from the Putnam Lake Fire Department. 
Supervisor Williams, I'd like to extend my gratitude to the Town of Patterson Highway Department on this morning's EMS call. As you are aware, the, the snowfall in the area, and actually this is dated uh, December 17th, <coughs> where the snowfall in the area affected driving conditions, making it harder for emergency vehicles to respond to any incident. As I was pulling up on scene within minutes of the assignment, a town truck who happened to be monitoring Putnam 911 dispatch was on scene plowing the road to the house, making it easier for myself, the Putnam Lake Fire Department fly car, the medic, P police department, and the ambulance to safely get through the road. Patient care was started right away and there was no delay in contact time. To have two different agencies in the town work efforts effortlessly during the time of an emergency is remarkable. Please extend my gratitude to the highway department and operator of the snow plow. And I believe the uh, the highway department was monitoring the emergency uh, radio before that, and they actually were on it before. Yeah. And I just want to say that this has been an ongoing policy of Ruskoff that they monitor the emergency channels. So if an emergency comes up, they are right on it. So great job, Russ. Mm -hmm. Okay, next item on, on my agenda is the uh, image made online and outpost renewal contracts for the town assessor's office. We have a resolution here approving the renewal contracts with Systems Development Group Incorporated for the assessor's office software and leasing, leasing and support. Um, my, only, my only question is, if you look on page two of our little packet here from SDG with the uh, contract, where it says software enhancement classifications, there's one and two standard and custom. Mm -hmm. Are we uh, getting both of them? Are they options, or is that, uh, or is that both included? They're both included. Okay. Um, one is the, the standard um, software enhancements that um, they will give us automatically. The uh, second one is if we ask for anything special. Those are the rates. And so also to, just to note that usually for the custom, it's usually 147 per hour, but they were giving us a rate of $100 per hour. Right. Right. Um, just so you all know, for example, one of our residents had asked to um, for the SDG site to make it searchable so they could search for comparable values in property. Mm -hmm. um, SGD did that and they did it at no cost. But that's one of the enhancements not covered. Okay. Uh, and also in the in the resolution, there's no price, right? There is no price. So do we need to add that? Sure. And that would be uh, $1,200 for the year and $100 per hour. In this case, we're doing it based on the contract. We're actually authorizing me to execute the contract. The one thing I do want to take out though is, um, first be it further resolved um, as far as I know the town assessor doesn't have the authority to execute contracts am I correct it uh, I think as a department head he might be able to and it, it, the the agreement or the letter that forwarded it called for him to sign it I know I that because he has been <laughs> But I, my understanding I, is... I certainly would err on the side of the supervisor signing it. Right. My understanding is the only one that can bind the town to a contract is a supervisor, and only if authorized by the town board. Yeah. I, in the procurement policy, there, and there are references to, uh, to other department heads signing, but I... I, I so the only thing I would like to see is in this resolution, that section that says the uh, town assessor jointly or, uh, or separately. separately. Where's the town supervisor to Yeah, okay. strike that out. Okay. Okay. So we don't need to add the price since it's the town supervisor. No, because it's and they, executing a contract. And, and they're specifically the, <coughs> the uh, attachments, the, both of the agreements will be attached to the resolution and that refers to I think that's okay. So I'd like to make a motion to approve the resolution as written, excluding uh, where it says the town assessor jointly or severely to execute the contract. So moved. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
That's next all we, I have. Mr. Cook. Next we have a uh, request from one employee to transfer seven hours of personal time to another employee and um, which I think we all agree is not a problem. However, the uh, employee handbook does not cover personal time. It handle or covers uh, vacation time, or sick time, that type of thing. So I would recommend to the town board that we approve this request uh, with the understanding that the handbook will be updated uh, next go around to include personal time as well as vacation time and sick time. So, okay with that? Sure, what's the distinction for us for personal and sick? Does sick carry over and personal doesn't? Correct. Right? Correct. Okay. Does personal car convert to sick? No. no. Doesn't, it just doesn't carry over. Okay. So use it or lose it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, sure. 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 So I'll, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Next, uh, activity reports. I believe we discussed this uh, last meeting, and the supervisor has provided us with a uh, log sheet um, documenting uh, mileage and locations from two times out in and. Uh, the starting and ending mileage. So, um, just so you all know, I worked with the uh, town controller on developing this. If you flip it over, we've got it two different ways. So, whatever anybody's preference is. How are doing? So, how are we just how, how the same? How are we chart? How are we going to enforce this? Like, are we going to our department heads going to send this back to people if it's incomplete, or how do you anticipate sort of enforcing this? Well, we use develop a law, so um, is that going to fall to department heads, or will the controller gonna, reject know, them? It, I mean, once the town board approves this form, then I'm going to send a memo to all the um, department heads saying anybody in your department needs to use this form and it needs to be in by the 20th of the month. Okay, and so if we, uh, what, I'm, what I'm asking is though, I guess to get to the heart of the matter is, we're signing vouchers before or after the town board meeting and we look at XYZ person and we see an activity log and it's not completed. So do I then say I'm not gonna sign that voucher or do we then refer this back to the town department head or they do I talk to the guy? And I'm not trying to be a, a pain, but I'm just no, saying no, no. compliance is always Yes, a problem. No, they're going to submit them into my office. If they're not complete, they're going to get kicked back. If they want to get reimbursed for mileage, they've got to be complete. So not to be more of a stickler, but maybe then you should have a place on here for a department head signature so that the department head can, can be charged with policing this as well. If it's if it's being charged back, the department head has to sign the voucher. voucher. Yeah. Okay, but I'm just saying as far as the time, you know, in other words, maybe they should be signing off on these. In other words, there should be some line of defense before you have to look at every every mileage log for every person. I'm still gonna have to look at every one. Well, it will show that they just throwing it out looked there. at it and approved it. You're right. I mean, you can actually take out page blank of blank, but just put. We added in. that in because at times it's a problem. All right, yeah. I mean, if you want to approve hey, the hey, form. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there for discussion. So you with guys, that change, we'll figure a way to get it in. I mean, is everybody, I, I'm, oh, I agree. I, I think it, it shouldn't come to a voucher until it's been properly completed. And uh, the de each department has, has to sign off on the mileage for their staff. Also worth noting, though, is that this form, because I don't want anyone at uh, Town Hall to think this is really a new thing. Uh, other than the change in the starting and ending mileage, this is the identical form mm -hmm. that was approved in 2009 by the, the then town board, so April of uh, 2009. So we're really just modifying, uh, adding, starting, beginning and ending mileage in the I department just, I, head signature. Right. I just think that from what we've seen in signing vouchers, there's a lot of them that have been submitted that yeah. were not passed muster today. I think you're right. So, so long as there's a change in behavior. And I think the uh, uh, landscape version gives you more room to write on I guess. Well Makes I did but our controller did not which is why we've got <laughs> two versions. 
I will. All right, so I'll, I'll second. I think the, did you make a motion to approve? Or do we have I'll make a motion to approve the to form as submitted to us. This which form? So move. With the which? modification that Kevin is suggesting. Right. So and I don't to, care which format. We don't need to landscape or portrait. Form. <laughs> They're both the same. Yeah. 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 Whichever it's how you turn the page, so okay. I don't think it matters. So, so I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving on. Okay. Nothing else, Charles? No. Okay. First item we have is a request from the Patterson Fire Department to add three new members to the uh, Department Insurance Program. We would, I'd like to make a motion to add Kayla Anderson, Anthony Gabrielli, and Brian Spindor, as submitted from Monica DeFeo, the Recording Secretary for the Fire Department. So moved. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I would just like to add that I'd like to commend the Patterson Fire Department. These are all young individuals, 16 years of age. Um, so it's good that they're starting them young and bringing them in. Because we need as many volunteers as we can get. I would like to uh, defer the executive session, the two items on legal services contract and uh, Finese versus planning board to the end of the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, lastly, an announcement. Our town clerk had asked me to let the uh, residents of Patterson know that on January 12th and January 13th will be the Christmas tree pickup. So if you have a Christmas tree that you would like to get recycled, please have that out, that out at curbside January 12th or the 13th. Thank you. Live tree. <laughs> yeah, not the plastic ones. We don't want those. Great, great point of clarification. Yeah, thank you. Okay, first on my agenda is a year-end resolution. Um, I would like to introduce this resolution as read and uh, move its adoption. Um, it is a resolution uh, authorizing that all bills be paid uh, through December 31st. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, second. We. Um, had a discussion last meeting about the return to work clearance form. Kevin, you were going to take a look at some forms. And, I, and this suddenly jogged my memory and I dropped the ball completely on that. So I apologize. Um, I mean, I, you know, at this point, if you're if you're anxious to approve it, I have no problem with it. Otherwise, I will have to go back. I completely, I saw this in my packet tonight and realized I had forgotten. How about we approve this form for use tonight and uh, we can, it. yeah, we That's can go fine. back and modify it. That's fine. Yeah. Well, well, it's it's very straightforward. I brought up last time about employee signature on the form. I still think that we should have somewhere like a spot for the employee to sign this. That's all. Well, and the employee signing it is just acknowledging that they know what's on the paper? So it would be after the doctor signs it? Or does the doctor? No, the doctor would have to sign it because this is basically coming from the doctor well, saying that the employee is fit for duty. Does the doctor give this, hand this back to the employee and bring it into us or does it get sent directly to us? I guess that would be the... I think usually I've seen them, you, you bring them to your doctor and they get sent to your yeah. employer, don't you? Yeah, okay. usually. Yeah. Isn't that usually what Usually. Happens? We'd have to bring then the employee in and sign it before he went back to work. So then, Don, is there any purpose in having the employee sign with some attestation that says this is a original document with no changes? I mean, is, I, it, it, Don, one other, just before you answer yeah. that, um, <laughs> it may be that a doctor is going to tell us that an employee can come back to partial duty. So yeah, at I'm that point, it might be good to, that he acknowledges that. That the employee does. Yeah. But I, my knee-jerk reaction is it would be nice to have the employee sign it just to make sure that he confirms the doctor's advice and he does not see anything on the form that's in, in, improper. And if there was, we then have the employee having to be accountable for that as well. So, I mean, I, it's kind of erring on the side of completeness and thoroughness. Uh, it, the practical and logistical issue is, I, mean, I don't know if it's that big an issue in these days of electronic media, we could, you could accept a, an electronic 
signature, sign, sign, uh, sign the form with a PDF to save someone having to run down to town hall. It's a big inconvenience. See, I, I was just thinking that along the lines that this would come back and then the conversation develops between the employee and the department head or the supervisor. And he goes, oh, wait a minute. Doctor never told me that. Right, or or, or it, it. I mean, I think there's there's a whole realm of potential ways that there could be accountability down the line. I mean, if the employee comes back two weeks later and says he really can't, isn't fit for duty, he wants to go out again, he, he signed the form acknowledging the doctor's advice that he's okay. I mean, there's there's all types of evidentiary uh, you know, uses of it if you let the mind wander on these things but well uh, the thing of it is is when you fill out these forms the the doctor has the pla the, the plaintiff the plaintiffs the <laughs> patient's subjective complaints and then he may have objective findings from tests he did so you know typically if you actually took this to the doctor and were examined on the same day and was filled out the doctor's first question to you is how do you feel and the question is are you representing your complaints accurately to your doctor so you know if you didn't tell that to the doctor or you never said you know they usually say how do you feel do you think you can go back you know that's typically what a doctor largely relies upon. I don't, but I don't know how we craft this form to say, you know, that they've accurately represented. I don't aware think we say that. We just simply say that no. the acknowledgement that I've read the material and the material is accurate. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, it could cause a little bit of a disagreement between the doctor and the and the patient, but in which case the patient probably go out and get another doctor. In which case he's not coming back to work. Right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but the form would not have been submitted to you if it wasn't complete. Right. So right. you wouldn't have it yet. Well, we've seen forms, you know, submitted to us all the time along the same venue that we have to kick back, take it back to your doctor and fill it out. It, it a kind of a basic part of it is that the, the employee signing it accurately states that that is in fact his doctor also. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, that's something. true. So I, I mean, it, I just see I see the patient signature on it as nothing more than more completeness. If there's if there are problems, then they'll be ferreted out at that stage. Okay. All right. So we want to modify it to include the signature. The signature. Okay. So I'll make a motion. We approve the form with the addition of the um, employee signature on the form. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, last on my agenda is I've been contacted by Captain Brett White. Um, I believe he's with the National Guard. Um, Governor Cuomo has a uh, program for Citizen Preparedness Corps. They are looking to go around to different municipalities and do disaster preparedness training. Um, I think it's a great idea. I know, Pete, usually you're doing all the training for us. Might be good to get a new perspective. Sure, it's always good to have someone else come in. But I wanted, this is a good basic course. Yes. Yeah. But um, I wanted to bring it before the board, see what your feelings were. Um, my opinion is I'd like to schedule something beginning of March. You know, hopefully the weather will be broken. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. Anybody else? That's fine. Well, without, okay. without knowing much about the training and just making sure with Pete's input that it's yeah. not redundant to something you're already providing. Uh, no, I actually I've, I'm familiar with this training mm -hmm. and I've seen it. It's good. It's good basic class for citizens. Citizen uh, preparedness. Citizen preparedness. Okay. They teach you how to put together a kit. Uh, sometimes they even give you a little basic kit or mm -hmm. start of a kit. I know they were doing that when they first rolled out this program. The governor first wrote, they had a lot of grant money. I don't know if they still do that, but it is a good um, good awareness training. Okay, great. Moving forward. Kevin. All right, first item on my agenda is a, uh, we have a letter from the Office of Senior Resources, the town of Patterson. I'll read it and then just move the resolution as read. Uh, the Putnam County Office for Senior Resources is currently renewing our agreement with you in regards to our partnership for outreach services in your town. We previously negotiated the amount of 2500 for the town of Patterson. Um, as in the past, you'll continue to receive a bill for the amount at the end of the year. Uh, please notarize and return uh, both copies of this letter as well as additional documents to us by December 13th. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. 
um, and they have a number. I believe this was the same amount that they billed us last year. Um, my understanding of the organization is I know that they've had several meetings, uh, outreach meetings at the, um, the rec center. They seem to be very well received. Um, do we feel like we're getting our money's worth for 2,500? It seems, I think we, we, we are. I, I, I think we are. This is more about outreach to individual uh, seniors. If somebody calls up, as we had the other day, they're looking for information on a, you know, how to do a will. Right. Okay. And they'll hold their hand uh, doing that. Okay. All right. So then, what, uh, that being said, that I'll make a motion to uh, move a resolution as read, adopting the agreement authorizing the supervisor to renew the agreement with the Putnam County Office for Senior Resources. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Um, I'm going to defer my open meetings uh, law. I wanted to actually share some information with the board, and uh, I'd rather provide that to you than actually discuss it with you now. So since I haven't had a chance to do that, I'm going to defer that to the next uh, board meeting. Um, but you know what I will do is let me, I will send, share a copy of the open meetings law. I thought it was something that um, the, the primary focus of my discussion, and I'll send a memo around, we can talk about it uh, next time, was basically what constitutes a meeting of this board and also what's actually appropriate for executive session. Um, I know we've had some conversations when Mike was a supervisor in terms of, you know, if, if I'm at the A&P and I see Charlie and then I run into you and we start talking about something, is that a meeting? If you're in the supervisor's office and then I walk down and sit down on the meeting, is that is that a meeting? As I read this, it's somewhat ambiguous to me, but I would like some clarification of exactly what we're going to consider and constitute a meeting and what what circumstances are okay. Also, I looked at executive session and I think we should all review executive session and just talk about are we you know appropriately applying it, shall we say? So um, we certainly are trying this year. Ron and I had this conversation about no, I, what I, is and is not an executive session. I agree. I know. I agree. So and have right. So I just passed out basically a copy of the law. Those are the items that I'd like to talk about. I'll share some more information with you in a in a note to the board for the next meeting. So thank you. Yep. Uh, so the next item on my agenda is budget transfer requests 54 and 55. Uh, 54 is for budget. Uh, for a transfer of 25000 within highway, machinery, and equipment and capital outlay to general repairs contractual for $25,000. Uh, budget transfer request 55 is within the rec department youth. Uh, it's just $100 between two different program, one for sports and one for youth. So I'll make a motion to approve budget transfer requests for 54 and 55 as submitted. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I have a, uh, a motion to add an additional item to my agenda having to do with a clarification of a uh, prior resolution we had at the last meeting adopting the local law related to burning permits and outdoor fireplaces. Second. So moved. All Second. in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so I believe I, I said I'd put this on my agenda because I think I was the one who read it into the record. Um, we had previously at our last town board meeting after the um, um, public hearing uh, had agreed to move the resolution as read adopting uh, burning permits and outdoor fireplaces as local law uh, 6 of 2016. Uh, we discovered uh, when we went to actually file that law that we actually skipped a, we skipped a law. We should actually have filed it as local law 5. So this resolution essentially is a clarification adopting that prior resolution we adopted as local law 6 correctly now as local law 5 of 2016. Uh, the balance of the resolution is exactly as we had discussed at the last meeting, having to do with clarifications regarding our burning policy. So that being said, I'll make a motion to move local law of number five of 2016, modifying the prior resolution as read, so moved. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is all I have. Thank you. Okay. Other business? Anybody else? Any other? Town board member have any other business? Yes, I just want to ask one question. Is there anything new on the uh, John Barrett Road? Yes. Um, improvement district? Based on the information that I um, was able to pull out of our historic records, we found an agreement that obligated that lot to maintain the detention pond. Um, I shared that with the um, property owner's attorney and uh, case closed. Good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Are you, I saw this Nimer letter in there. Is there anything you need to talk about about that? Um, 
Sorry about that. Yeah, if you want to, you know, just read it. Sure. I, I mean, I saw it. It seemed like it was good news, but I wasn't sure if it was any further. It was leading to anything else. Basically, uh, New York Municipal Insurance Reciprocal is our town insurers, and they come out and com complete an underwriting survey, survey of our town where they look at potential risks and hazards. It's kind of a risk management function um, that they provide, uh, and they provide recommendations. So, for instance, if you had a lot of um, height differentials on your sidewalks, they might tell you to grind down the sidewalks, or unsafe conditions, they might tell you to remedy them. So, they uh, had actually conducted the survey and they're pleased to announce that after careful consideration uh, there were no recommendations uh, at this time uh, and they said everything seemed to be in order and keep doing what we're doing so good news good news, good news. great doing a good job Antoinette I have one additional item that I'd like to uh, discuss uh, in discussing um, what we are doing with our uh, building and maintenance supervisor um, we discussed when we did the hire that we were going to allow special districts to um, use him from time to time and um, we would bill his time back so that there is an accounting. Uh, we received a memo, I received a memo uh, from Trish just before Christmas uh, with the recommended rates for 2016 and 2017. Uh, the rate we would be billing Dennis back uh, for 2016 would be $41 an hour um, and it would increase to $41.50 for 2017. I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, these rates for uh, Dennis Mays as uh, working for special districts. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, do we want to it's up to you. I mean, uh, I talked to Rich. He said this is not a pressing matter. Do you want me to address these now, or do you want to put these on for next meeting? Why don't we you want to take or care of them now? Or do you want to well, one digest them? The one on uh, the building permit. We, we had last. About. Yeah, we, yeah we had last meeting, and we had deferred because we were waiting on something from Bob. Um, do you want to talk about that one? This was an issue of... Uh, sure, I'll, I, th I think yeah. we received a, 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 a re request from an individual in town who, uh, based on personal circumstances at home, having to do, I think, with a breakup of a marriage and uh, divergence of resources, um, had didn't have funds for... She felt it was a hardship to renew a building uh, permit that was still outstanding. Um, Bob looked at it, uh, knows both entities, knows people that uh, this is concerning, and uh, I spoke to him actually before the meeting and he agreed that there was financial hardship and said basically his thought was to renew, waive the renewal fee, uh, but but agree that there would still have to be, you know, the final payment at the time of the CO. So we're waiving the renewal, but obviously, you know, when the CO is uh, issued. So we're not waiving so it. We're, we're actually deferring, deferring, deferring it, I guess, right. would be the better way to say it, yeah. which I think sounded like it would be an appropriate so, resolution. So, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll make a motion to accept his recommendation unless you want or you want to discuss it or well, well second I'll, I'll make a motion to accept the building inspector's recommendation regarding the property at uh, 40 overland road so moved second i mean honestly i'll go along with this my concern though is this has been going on for quite some time i remember yeah um i mean is it going to be wrapped up anytime soon we're going to do well, is it you know, like a like one year extension? Is she ever going to cross the line to get the CL? Yeah. Is it a one year extension, though? It's a one year extension of the permit? <coughs> well, let's make the extension until uh, June 30th next year. The person says in the spring of 2017, I hope to be able to uh, work on having this project completed and be able to finally obtain the CL. Generally, how long does the renewal remain open? One year. And that's what, then, I mean, if she doesn't get it done within one year, then all bets are off. She's, we've given her an extension. So then let's just de defer the renewal fee for a period of one year. We do it that way? The, the, yeah, the, the request wasn't, or we weren't considering deferring it forever. I, mean, I don't think anybody was thinking that we would be deferring uh, two or three renewals. A one-year renewal infers one year 
I mean, one year deferral. So, so how about we say well, that we'll def it. we'll defer the renewal fee for until the time of the final CO is issued, but not to be more than one year. All right. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Move on. Okay. So, I'll we have a second. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move it up. Do we want to address this, or should we put this on the next agenda? The Jeep repairs. I think we need. Either way, we can move it. If you want to move it. I mean, uh, sure, honestly, the work has been done. I know the condition of the vehicle. The work needed to be done. Yeah. Um, you know, I wish he had gotten estimates before he got the right. work Agreed. done. We had a substantial conversation about following procurement policy. He is aware, but at the same time, the contractor acted in good faith. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's a so, local contractor. So yes. basically, a local contractor performed some repairs on our uh, um, 2005 Jeep Cherokee, which is in the parking lots, town of Patterson vehicle. Uh, it was brought in for some simple maintenance, and ad additional items were identified that needed to be done. Uh, the work was done technically current, uh, pursuant to our procurement policy. We should have gotten estimates, but the work was done in good faith. So at this time, um, I will make a motion to approve the payment of the bill from Stan's Auto Body for the repairs of the vehicle, which we do have this budgeted uh, in the uh, as a line item to repair the vehicle. So it's not an issue of not having the money uh, for the amount of three thousand three hundred and forty-six dollars and twenty-three cents. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. See, now we can start 2017 clean. All right. Anybody else? Public recognition. I promise to keep it short. Take, well, I not take, promise take as long as you like. Uh, at the last meeting or the meeting before, we had decided on, uh, or you had decided that there was going to be water testing done. I was just wondering when it was going to start. Um, Are you picking this up? Close is always better. Okay. Is, is the mic on? Yeah, it's on. Yes, okay. okay. Yeah. All right. uh, the Putnam County uh, Health Department came out today and took water samples um, on the direction of the New York State Health Department. They gave numbers to Putnam County, or they gave names and addresses. They took water from myself, Jennifer, Irene Pasco on North Street, and they had another house down the end of our street, which we have no idea. They were not on our list. Right. And I don't think they got a response from phone calls or knocking on the door today to get that. So they were going to contact the New York State Health Department back to see could they do from somebody else. Could they take it from another house? I mean, they were not getting a response from this one. I don't know what the rhyme or reason was, you know, of the houses that they did pick out, but, you know, for whatever, I don't know. But they were doing a full panel on um, these four homes. Uh, so I was just wondering when we were going to do the other ones. Well, um, I guess my question back to you, mm -hmm. have you heard back from um, Mr. Winkley? Winkler? He's Winkler. waiting to hear from everybody. He said well, he was going to try and do a meeting on the, uh, what was it, the 17th or 18th of January? Last last I heard from him, he did the, the online um, calendar. Everybody was going to respond. Right. I believe everybody did. And he was going to, just before Christmas, send us a date of the meeting. And I haven't seen anything from him yet. Well, I think what he, he, the last one that I got indicated he would let us know right after the holiday that it was going to be one of those dates. Um, I also wanted to know is, like, can you reach out to our health department, to the Putnam County Health Department, to see if somebody from our health department could be on this committee? Because yes. it looked like once Mr. I get Winkley it, was looking for... Once I get it for, date, then I'm going to reach out to the health department. Okay. And I did have some other people, or I had another person approach me to ask if we needed any more people on the committee. I don't know what t other type of people we need. This was um, actually as a local attorney, um, you know, who I know through my work. And I wasn't sure whether we needed people, more people who we needed. It's always fun to have another attorney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, he's aware of what, you know, our problem is with the water and everything because, you know, I, I, I know him as well as, yeah, you know, I don't have, I don't have a him. problem with bringing okay. somebody else onto the committee, especially mm -hmm. since we're just starting up. Okay. Um, I, I wanted, 
It's not a what? <laughs> it's not a class action attorney, is it? Not to my knowledge. It, I, I, I'd Tim want to know Curtis, more I'm about sure what, you guys might know him too. I don't know. Clients, what he's interested in doing. He said he would be interested to, in joining the committee. You but know, to accomplish what? Whatever we need to accomplish. Okay. Whatever well, we're looking to get into, whatever research we need to do. Sure. You know, usually he said when, he would be happy to help in any way that he could. Usually when people are coming onto this sort of a committee, they they have an agenda. They they mm -hmm. want to see something accomplished. Certainly, you know, in your case it's Maybe clean as water a friend, your, he just wants to see me get water that Maybe. I can use. So um, yeah, I just like to know more about about that, but certainly, sure. sure, he could come on the committee. I wouldn't see an issue. All with right. That. I mean, if we have another committee meeting, I'll let him know when it is, and or you can talk to him ahead of time. Or yep. Okay. And as far as our water testing, now that I know that you know what the health department is going to yeah. do, and the holidays are out of the way, next week I'm going to draft a letter, circulate it to everybody, mm -hmm. okay. um, to send to the ten people. Well, now I mean, Mrs. Pasco already has been tested by the state but we talked about that and, and having an alternate which i did i, I got so mr good. romeo he's you know he was good to go right. yes definitely so we're good. okay yeah all right maybe okay. i could make so this suggestion out. regarding your the attorney who's interested maybe he could just send a letter to the supervisor expressing his sure. interest and what maybe elaborating on what his interest was just so sure. we okay. understand I'll, it's in good faith and, okay i'll speak to him yeah sure can I ask All right, we'll who, do. who the attorney Oh, was? I said, I thought you, you didn't hear me. I said Tim Curtis. Tim oh, Curtis? Correct. Yeah, no. We'll have that conversation offline. So there we oh, go. That's so fun. there we go. We have the... Yeah, uh, no. Okay. Okay. The supervisor will speak to you offline. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that was very interesting. Why? Well, no, we'll talk about that. <laughs> always have to scratch a little bit deeper. Yeah, that's, you know, I'm always leery. I, I mean, we want to yeah, include I mean, anybody, but. I realize that, but I mean, I he's a friend also. Okay. I mean, I've known Tim for many years. Uh, listen, I thought he was a friend a friend to me as well and to the town. And yeah, yeah that's, we'll cut, yeah. It, we'll cut it off there. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Okay, any. I think we I think we're protected by public comment. Well, let's see we? if we can get this to come yeah. down. Although he's not Just a public take, official. Take can you off. get it? Just pull it right off. Pull it right off? The, the mic. Grab the mic. Pull. There, oh, there you okay. go. Okay. Uh, my name is Karen Powers, and I'm on the Board of Trustees of the Patterson Library. And I'd like to address um, Peter Dandriano's disaster relief program. I'm assuming that's something very different from the Emergency Management Joint Task Force. Uh, that I believe you uh, sure what we had talked about earlier excuse what me we, yes yeah. earlier the disaster relief task force what I'm talking about however is an, is an emergency management task right. force that was in place until there was an illness in your family and then and, it, it and still is it's been reactivated Peter's <clears> been running it he's chairing it what we're talking about is offering training to residents who would like to sit in and understand right and that, that's very different yes and so you're back to the joint task force and and you've already had meetings with george etc yeah we had a meeting in the beginning of the month was it yes uh, the eighth you now december 8th. oh great yeah uh, yeah i just wanted to be sure because the, the library is keenly interested yes. in that and they have made him the head of a committee that will participate so yes we had a meeting at the library with uh, all the library staff uh, some of the library staff that was involved with their emergency management planning uh -huh. as well as members of uh, night uh, representative from nice egg but sheriff's department <coughs> Public Ooh, Health very department, nice very um, nice the rec center nobody yeah. told us <laughs> well they were there <laughs> the board um well i guess they didn't address the board but uh the, the librarian was there and uh, yeah yeah, the, the several staff, members of their emergency staff, management. Yeah, that's kind of a separate thing. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Didn't mean to do okay. <clears throat> Anyone else? Motion to go into executive session? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all for coming. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.